Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Happy Sunday coming at you with 2021 Topps Gold Label Baseball. 16 box case, full case, pick your team number four, all card chip, just dropped last Friday. All right, there's the fresh case right there. Big thanks everybody here for getting in on the action. Appreciate it. Roy with that double last spot mojo getting the Brewers and the Mets. And there's everyone else right there. Well, boys and girls, the baseball season is in the books. Crazy to think about that the regular season is over. And now a stress-filled uh, postseason for a lot of you, for a lot of you. Now we got four stacks of four right here. Good luck, everybody. One frame autograph per box. That's the uh, that's the unique part about gold label. <laughs> yeah, that hydrates me well too, poker. But but uh, I don't know if people would appreciate. It does not help my motor skills. I don't think people would want me to risk their their hits. There's the frame. So all card chip. Now, if this is anything like previous years of gold label, there there are different levels to these. Do they still do that this year? We'll find out. All right, so all card ship. No, maybe not. Oh, yeah, they do. They still do, like, class one, two, and three. This one didn't have a... Oh, that does have a class number right there. Class one. So then there's different classes with different uh, different short prints. All right? So, like, class three, one of ones, could I think, are, like, the shortest printed one, I guess. So that's why all cards ship. You'll be able to get all these cards. And and uh, I think there's, there's still a, quite a bit of set building that people do. With the gold label, still a fun project to to build sets with. All right, there's Aaron Judge for the Yankees and Trevor Bauer for the Dodgers. Behind the frame is Chipper Jones. In front of the frame is Jordan Alvarez, and the frame is a one of one Juan Gon Gonzalez. Woo! That's a nice start. Nice. Texas Rangers, Brian Crouch with Texas. And all aboard the Big Hit Express. Whoop, whoop. It's a good start. All right. Next box. Yeah, a one of one. The frame right over there. Well, what's everyone's thoughts on the uh, wild card games? Yankees, Red Sox. Who does everyone have there? Oh, that's going to be a close one. There's a Juan Soto. Seems like there's some sort of like black ink on the back of that. Sometimes the, the colors are a little hard to spot here. That's Willie Mays. That's numbered to 9 out of 50. And a purple Cabrian Hayes to 99. Oh, poor Clayton Kershaw. Walked off the mound a little, little early in what could be his last start, and, and with the Dodgers, I'm sure they'll always resign. But if if the injury is what it's feared to be, it could be kind of scary. Cabrian Hayes, nice rookie card for the Pirates. 
uh, Mary with that one. Willie goes to uh, Andrew and the Giants, my rivals. Although, I guess tip of the cap, great season for them this year. And it's Monty Harrison. Rookie auto for the fish. Alex with the Marlins. I think the, uh, as of now, I think the Yankees are our slight favorites. Uh, that, if you're if if you're into uh, investing in in uh, in baseball, then uh, you know, maybe a run line situation could be a thing. Whoever has like plus one and a half runs or something like that. Tolker thinks it's going to be Atlanta versus Tampa Bay in the World Series. Yeah, that could be interesting. Yeah, the baseball, it's always tough. The playoffs can, playoffs can, can be a, a real crapshoot. Oh, there's a red Kyle Lewis, 49 out of 50. And a red Austin Meadows to 75. I think the different classes have different... Uh, the colors are different parallels. So this Meadows is a class one. I know the, the print is hard to see, but that's a class one red. That's the 75. And then the Kyle Lewis is class two. So the class two red is out of 50. So a lot of, a lot of layers. The frame behind Chris Bryant Cubs edition is Dalton Varsho. Rookie auto, gold frame for the Snakes. That'll be for Sean A. and Arizona. All right, next. Oh, the frame is right here. No, no one, no one has, no one in the chat has thoughts on Red Sox, Yankees. What about Cardinals, Dodgers? My Dodgers. People are asking if, if, if I'm nervous about the game. Not really. I, 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 I think I'm comfortable and acknowledge that crazy things can happen in a one-game playoff. So I've made my peace with that. So I think uh, not nervous. And the Dodgers finished the season pretty strong, so I'm pretty confident about that. I'm not saying the Dodgers are gonna blow out the Cardinals, but. Feel, I feel like they're in a good good position to play a great game. And if they do their thing, they should be able to move on to the next round to face the Giants. That's a series I'm nervous about. There's Austin Meadows to 75. The only thing you like about the Dodgers is Chris Taylor from your hometown. Where is that? Yeah, I'm a big fan of Chris Taylor. I think he was a former uh, former Mariners prospect, I want to say, or came up in the Mariners organization. Didn't really kind of washed out there, and think got traded to the Dodgers. He kind of rebuilt his uh, rebuilt his approach, his swing, and everything, and kind of became the player he is today. There's Hassan Kim, four out of twenty-five. The Korean International going to Aaron K and the Padres. Oh, from Virginia Beach, Virginia. Nice. All right. Quarter of the way through the break.
that um, framed card out of there. Rex is Rex is picking Yankees for uh, for Anthony Rizzo. I guess these these black parallels, class one black parallels are parallels, but they're just not numbered. All card shipped though. There's Tony Gwynn. And behind Mike Trout is Trevor Rogers. Rookie autograph Trevor Rogers. He had a pretty strong season. Alex Fogel with the fish. Oh, Rick Honeycutt went to uh, high school with your aunt. Nice. Yeah, he was a he was a really solid Dodgers pitching coach for a while. I think he had some. I think he had some uh, some health thing. I guess age really was just catching up with Rick Honeycutt. So. So I think after uh, I think he he retired from you know from uh, pitching coach duties a couple of years ago. Mark Pryor is the Dodgers pitching coach right now. Um, there's the frame. But yeah, I think I think just kind of age caught up with him. Just the everyday grind of traveling really caught up with him. So so he, I think he's like a, one of, like a special assistant or something like that. To the GM or the front of the front office or something. Like that. I think he travels a little bit to, to like Arizona to do a little bit of scouting, and whatnot. Oh, is he now retired? Retired, Oliver? Just from everything? Well, I guess that's. I mean, it's uh, Aaron Judge to seventy-five. Ah, so uh, Oliver's saying that he's. He's out doing uh, front office duties as well. He's a retired, retired. Yeah, pitching coach was two years ago, right? Yeah, two years ago. Well, good for him. He deserves it. He spent a lot of time in the in baseball just as a pro and as a coach. There's Derek Jeter, Pete Alonzo, and Hassan Kim again. 72 out of 75, gold frame for the Padres. Aaron. Ah, there was a stadium video a couple weeks ago. Got it. Oh, hats off to uh, to Rick Honeycutt. I think he was part of those great A's teams in the '80s, right? If I'm not mistaken. He was, right, yeah. And that was part of those. It's a pretty solid pitcher if I, if I remember correctly. Oh, there's a relic right there. Was he a setup guy? I thought I thought I thought he was a starter, but I don't I don't I was a little a little too too young to remember that those specifics. There's Alec Baum. To 150 for the Phillies. That'll be for Howard. Let's see what the relic is all about. That's behind the Crone Zone. Jake Cronenworth. It's Pedro Martinez. Legends relic. 12 out of 50. Red Sox jersey going to Chris and the Bo Sox. Over here, Nolan Arenado. Over here is Ryan Jeffers, 23 out of 75. 
Twins autograph. Jarrett with the Twins. So here's a question for you, ladies and gentlemen. So teams like the Giants uh, were teams that were not, that just recently were just weren't playoff teams. I mean, in fact, the Giants just had pretty, pretty poor records the last few seasons. What's the team next year that will get into the playoffs next year? Like the teams that missed the playoffs this year, let's say with a below 500 record. Which one of those teams get to the, gets into the playoffs next year? So, like Toronto doesn't count because they, they almost got into the playoffs. They, they had a record well over 500. Uh, Orioles? No, probably not. Cleveland was just a couple games under 500. Maybe. Detroit? Maybe. If, I don't know. Detroit might be a couple years away. Royals? Bobby Wood Jr. could carry that team. Twins. Twins have got to be a... They, they were... They were unexpectedly... There's Kirby Puckett, RIP. They were unexpectedly not good. <laughs> there's Bregman to 150 for the Strohs. I mean, I didn't have any like futures plays on any of these. There's Darvish to 50. But just really thought that the uh, Twins would just be a lot more competitive this year. Yeah, Padres, that makes sense, yeah. Is that, a, is that really a thing, Oliver? Bruce Bochy may go back to the Padres? Out of retirement? Come home, Bochy? And lead, lead your old team to glory? There's Labor Day. And the frame is jersey and auto, Barry Larkin, 16 out of 40. Two-color jersey and autograph. What, what great penmanship by the Hall of Famer. That is going to be for Cliff and the Red Legs. There you go, Cliff. Golden Greats framed autograph jumbo relic card. That's pretty sweet. Did Bochi leave the door open for, uh, for returning to management, Oliver? I, I don't remember how he left things. Or did he leave the door open? I suppose he's not actively looking for jobs, but if if the I guess if your old club comes calling, you know, then then maybe maybe you got to answer that call. Um, the AL West, Seattle. I mean, it looked like they, they were, they were, they looked like they're ahead of schedule. If those youngsters on the team, they got other youngsters coming up the pipeline. A's, but no, those teams are over 500. Angels are Rangers. I don't know. If the Angels make a big pitching overhaul, then that could be a team that, that can surprise people. Sub 500 team. Metro sub 500 team. Yeah, if they had a healthy Syndergaard, healthy... Healthy DeGrom, I think that might have been huge. Lindor started off so slow, too. That's a sub-500 team that could be easily be in the playoffs. Now. Marlins, too, I think. Marlins, too. They've got a great starting rotation down in Miami. Uh, Cubs were sub-500. They're rebuilding. Pirates, I, yeah, I think they're still a few years away. Yeah, Padres we talked about. Rockies, probably not. Arizona, they're probably they've got Arizona has an interesting pipeline, but I think they're they're probably a few years away too. I'm seeing returns on the youngsters there. Ronald Acuna to 150. Nice guy, poker is Barry Lark a nice dude. Used to scout minor league baseball in the Nationals organization. All right, the frame is Rafael Marchand. Rookie auto for the Phillies. Uh, 
Ah. Glowbug is saying that tomorrow Mets will mo will fire their manager and their GM. That's a Philly for Howard, by the way. Next box. And that's almost a certainty. Steve Cohen wants a big name hire to run baseball operations. Who is that big name hire? Get Theo Epstein out of the out of the major league offices. I feel like Theo Epstein's working on a lot of projects in that out there. Billy Bean or Theo Epstein are the rumored names. There's Tatis Jr. to 50. Are the rumored names for the front office? There's Ricky Henderson to 99. There's Shohei Otani, 69 out of 99, probably your, your AL MVP, right? Uh, Aaron with the Halos gets the Shohei. Ricky Henderson for the A's goes to Oliver. This, this is a great Ricky Henderson look. The hair, that old baseball jacket right there. Classic. And there's Tatis Jr. to 50. It's said that Epstein wants an ownership stake if he goes to the Mets. That's not a, not a bad idea. And there's Zach McKinstry. Rookie auto for the Dodgers. Great depth guy for the Dodgers, especially early in the season. David M. With my Dodgers. <laughs> Poker is saying that they're going to hire Bobby Valentine. Or Davey Johnson. Cla classics. Remember when Bobby Valentine... Um, remember when Bobby Valentine was ejected from a game? Right. And then came back with like... A non-convincing like glasses and mustache combo or something like like he was like a like Groucho Marx or something like that. Right. So yeah, the Glowbug's reminding us, hey, Mets have an inferiority complex to the Yankees that they're trying to overcome. They want to make a big splash. Maybe get a former uh, a former Yankee great to coach the Mets, Glowbug? Who would that be? Casey Mize to 75. Get Joe Torrey out of the uh, out of the Major League Baseball offices doing discipline. There's Dean Kramer for the O's. William Davis with the Orioles. Buck Showalter maybe Globux thinking. What about a uh, what about a Dusty Baker? I feel like Dusty Baker's contract with Houston has not been extended, or maybe it wasn't. I don't think it was a very long deal that Dusty Baker deal. <laughs> Poker is definitely joking. His previous suggestions were Bobby Valentine and Davey Johnson. I think he's having a laugh. Lenny Dykstra <laughs> is a manager.
All right, the frame. The frame behind Nolan Arenado is Haven Smith. Yeah, I see him along with Dalton Varsho, among others, or some of the youngsters coming up the ranks in the Arizona farm system. Sean with the snakes. Oh, they may end up hiring Carlos Beltran again. That was a that was a Cohen was that a Cohen hire? So maybe he's just like that's the guy I wanted anyway. <laughs> Let's, one year removed from from whatever I don't I didn't think it was I guess maybe it was a big enough deal. It was one year removed from all that. Hey, who won all of the uh, all of the counting stat awards? I actually don't think I I took a look at all of that. So in the American League, Vlad Guerrero Jr. ended up with 48 home runs to lead the league. Salvador Perez, oh, tied with Sal Perez, who had 121 RBIs. Wow. And then Yuli Gurriel won the AL batting title with a 319 average. No one crested the 100 hit mark. Bo Bichette had 191 hits, though. Who had, who had, I think Whit Merrifield had a boatload of doubles. Yeah, Jimer Candelario, J.D. Martinez, and Whit Merrifield crested the 40 double mark. They each had 42. They're tied for 30, 42. Not a lot of triples, guys, but uh, Otani had eight triples. Badu, seven. Kevin Crimea, seven. Luis Arreyes. What about the National League? So in the NL, yeah, Tatis Jr. ended up with 42 home runs to lead the NL, and he had played 130 games. About 15, 16 fewer than Adam Duvall, who ended up with 38 home runs. Pete Alonso had 37 home runs. And then Adam Duvall ended up leading the league leading the NL with 113 RBIs, followed by Austin Riley, also the Braves, with 107, followed by Ozzie Albies with 106. They have the top three RBI guys. Man, generating a lot of a lot of runs there. And Trey Turner for the Dodgers ended up winning the batting title, 328. And I think, yeah, leading the, uh, leading the majors too. Good for him. I know a lot of that was with the Nationals, but... I mean, he really didn't stop hitting for the Dodgers as well. There's Luis Robert. Yeah, we'll look at pitching in a second. Julio did get his 20 wins. There's uh, Juan Gonzalez again, this time base version for Texas. Yeah, good comeback for Austin Riley, right? I think his first year, people were all about Austin Riley in the hobby. And then he tailed off the, the following year, I think, whenever that was. All blurs together now, but uh, but yeah, had a, had another another great season. He put together, he hit, played 160 games, hit 303, 33 home runs, 107 RBIs, 33 doubles, and a triple. I mean, I'll I'll take that. Um, I'll, I'll take that any day of the week, right? Any year. You know, and I mean, the, everyone thought, oh, without Ronald Acuna Jr., that season was sunk. But I mean, imagine them with Ronald Acuna Jr. Corbin Burns ended up winning the ER, the NL ERA title, 243. Scherzer ended up with 246. Walker Bueller, 247. Brandon Woodruff, 256. Zach Wheeler with a 278 ERA. Man, Zach Wheeler really had a nice season. Urias with 296. NL wins, Julio Urias with 20 wins. Wainwright had 17 this year. Wainwright turning back the clock. Even Walker Buehler at 16 wins there. Most strikeouts for the NL, Zach Wheeler, 247 strikeouts. 
to Max Scherzer's 236. Zach Wheeler had a, had a couple extra starts, though. But still, it's a lot. Um, and these are all qualified pitchers, of course. Um, there were four pitchers with under with a whip under one. Scherzer leading the NL. Corbin Burns leading the NL with .86. Corbin Burns with .94. Woodruff with .96. Walker Buehler with .97. Zach Wheeler, 1.01. .01. Julio Urias, 1.02. 1 Gossman with a pretty low one as well. A lot of, lot of low whips. Pretty impressive. That's right. I did see that. I was watching that game. Burns did sit after a couple innings to preserve that ERA title and Cy Young chances. There's Xander Bogart to 150. As for the Red Sox, they're moving on. Chris Walker with the Bo Sox. And the gold frame. Casey Mize, and it's Edgar Martinez. Nice. Five out of five. Nice. That's for Mark and the M's. Out of fives and under. Get the train whistle, Mark. All aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo -woo. Couple boxes to go. Yeah, why doesn't Julio get more love for the Cy Young? I mean, I guess the ERA <laughs> is 296. <laughs> There's a couple players that have better ERAs than him. What do the war numbers look like? Wins above replacement. On the AL side of things, and Julio Urias might be is the only 20 game winner, I think. Garrett Cole at 16 wins. Uh, ERA title winner Robbie Ray, 284. Next closest was Lance McCullers with 316. And uh, Robbie Ray also, he probably, that's, he's going to be your AL Cy Young. They had 248 strikeouts, a 104 whip. Yeah, he's, he's pretty good. <gasps> No frame in this. Is there just a regular auto in this? Oh. Redemption. Jonathan India. Cliff with the with the Reds. This might be your uh, this is probably your NL rookie of the year. I think your Vegas favorite. It's too good to sign his cards, I guess. He's like, I'm your presumptive NLM, your NL Rookie of the Year. Andrew Vaughn to 99. Sean Jaspi pretty high on Andrew Vaughn. He's a solid prospect. Joey Bart, 83 out of 150. Maybe future Buster Posey. Yeah, it was a great turnaround for Robbie Ray. Him and Corbin Burns, I think uh, both of them had had really reworked, like significantly reworked all of their mechanics and all that stuff. I think I was watching that Dodgers broadcast when Corbin Burns was pitching and they were saying that, um, they were saying that Corbin Burns was previously a four seam fastball slider guy. He was just not very good at it. Now he's a He's a, a, a cutter sinker guy or something like that. Cut fastball and changeup guy or something like that. I just had I completely reworked his his uh, his uh, pitch arsenal. There's the last frame right there. I wonder if I can. Dig up some wins above replacement numbers. But I think Robbie Ray also did like a similar similar thing as well, just kind of reworked mechanics. 
Yeah, sometimes I like to use Winds Above re Replacement just to get a broad overview of it. So for what it's worth, Oliver, Corbin Burns, among among all qualified pitchers in both leagues, has a 7.5 war, and, and Julio is at 5.0. Second is Zach Wheeler for the Philly, 7.3, and then it drops considerably. Nate Ivaldi, 5.6, Scherzer, 5.4, Garrett Cole, 5.3. Walker Buehler, 5.2. Interestingly, Robbie Ray has a 3.9 war, but that might be because of his 13 and 7 win-loss record, maybe. Not exactly sure how it's calculated for pitchers. There's Ian Anderson to 99. Francisco Lindor, purple, 46 out of 99. Tony Gwynn. I think that's just a class one black parallel. There's Cabrian Hayes. So Lindor for the M's. That goes to Roy. And Ian Anderson Braves, Matt Medlin. And the final frame behind Mike Trout is going to be a Mariner, Evan White. Rookie auto for the M's. M's making it really exciting down the stretch. Looks like, looks like a lot of their youngsters really looking good. They've got a lot in the pipeline, too. A lot of encouraging signs for Seattle. Mark with the Mariners. There you go, everybody. That was 16 box. Pick your team number four. Here's a quick little recap. So the Evan White, the 5 out of 5 Edgar Martinez. It also went to Mark. Juan Gonzalez, Paven Smith. Dean Kramer, Zach McKinstry, Raphael Marchand, Barry Larkin jersey in auto, and that was really cool. Jeffers, the Pedro Martinez relic. He had a couple Hassan Kims, Trevor Rogers. There's the other one. Dalton Varsho, Monty Harrison. And we kicked off with a one-of-one one Juan Gonzalez, which is pretty sharp. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for breaking and conversing with us. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.